So, you've stumbled upon your grandparents' old film in their attic. You want to watch them, but you might not know how to do it or even what you'll need. Of course, with a medium as old as film, some of the equipment may be hard to get, and with all analog media, once the film is gone, it's gone. To avoid losing everything completely, we're going to show you how to digitally transfer the film. Digitally transferring the film will make watching and storing all of your movies simple and protect them for the future in case the film is damaged. Before we get started, let's take a look at the different types of film. The most common consumer formats were 8mm, Super 8, and 16mm film. As you can see, 16mm has larger frames than the Super 8 film, while the Super 8 film has larger frames than the 8mm, with larger perforations at different intervals on the side. These larger frames mean that the 16mm will have a higher quality of video than the Super 8, while the Super 8 will have a better quality than the 8mm. All three formats have the ability to record sound as well, as is indicated by the strip running along the side of the film. There are two ways to transfer old film. The first and less expensive option is to project our film and then record it onto a camcorder or some other videotaping device as it is projecting. Old film projectors can be found for around $300 to $700 used. And, as with most devices bought used, there is no guarantee that they can function properly. As you can see, it works, but there is a major quality drop-off. The second option, which is used here at ImageHive, is more expensive and involves a process which uses machines, often in the $5,000 price range, to scan the film directly to your computer as a digital file. It's more of an investment, but the return product is vastly superior. Today we'll be focusing on the second way to do this, to ensure the best quality transfer that we can get. To get started, you'll need a few things. Isopropyl alcohol, or a film cleaning solution, a cloth rag, a film digital transfer machine for your particular format, and any video editing software. First, we'll need to splice some of the film segments. Some film comes to us damaged or with a botched attempt at splicing. We can fix this by placing the damaged segment onto the splicer. The perforations on the film should line up perfectly with the notches on the splicer. If the notches aren't aligning with the perforations, you may be using a splicer that's not suitable for the format of film you're using. You can then place something like a press tape over the center of the two segments being spliced. Repeat this process on the other side of the film. Next, we're going to set up the machine by threading the film on the feed reel into the take-up reel. The feed reel contains the film that is yet to be projected, while the take-up reel is the reel where footage that has already been viewed is wound up. If you want to see if any audio was recorded, you'll need to first check to see if the film has an audio track, which is determined by the audio strip on the side. If the strip is present, then you will need a machine that's capable of audio playback to see if there is any audio recorded. However, even if there is audio, due to technical limitations of equipment it was filmed on in the old age of the film, the audio is more than likely not synced and will be of poor quality. Let's run the film through once while applying a rag with a film cleaning solution on it to clean the film. Cleaning is important as it gets rid of any major artifacts that could affect the final quality of the film. There may still be some dust specks on the film that the cleaning process won't be able to completely get rid of, but that's okay, because we can always use video editing software to clean everything up once the transfer is done. Now we can start the transfer process. If you have multiple of each format, you'll need a different machine for Super 8, 8mm, and 16mm. Once everything is set up and the reel is rewound back to its starting point, we can start the transfer. Our machine is connected to a computer so we can monitor the transfer in real time. Once the transfer is done, you can import the file into any video editing software. From here, we're able to do basic editing such as trimming to cut out dead spots. Or, as we do here at ImageHive, we can use special plugins that can color correct, remove dust and scratches not taken care of in the cleaning procedure, reduce noise, and make it an HD quality file. Here is a sample of film before and after the editing process. Now that you've successfully transferred your old films, you can burn them to a DVD, upload them to YouTube and Facebook, or watch them with your family.